toasty because I know. okay you say it's cold okay it's okay. nice and toasty in the car but well, yes warm in the car unfortunately the reason why there is nobody at the beach is because it's only like about 54 degrees and i think they're christmas shopping no it's 54 degrees Southern Californians do not go to the beach when it's cold. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, they don't go out when it's raining. They, if they're out, they get into a shopping center. When it's cold, they do not go to a beach. They, they exercising comes to a standstill to a people. That's where they go to the gym. And there's nobody out there in their boats either. So <laughs> they got plenty of wind today, and there's nobody. But this is old camp. And this is not a spring chicken today. Of course, we're talking about. The Grinch that stole our mail. So yeah. The Grinch that stole Christmas. Oh yeah, it's called uh, the quasi-government operation called the United States Postal Service. Now what in the world are they up to? Well, they have decided to, you know, what they said that even though they're not saying it, they're saying they have to do it in order to maintain the standards of delivery, which is a farce. You know, since they don't even have to deliver mail according to the law. But they, uh, they're, they're going to delay your mail for one to two days now to teach the American public a valuable lesson. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, that they need more money. They need to post over. See, they, they just can't keep raising rates because the higher they raise the rates, the more people stop using the postal service. Well, as it is between email and direct deposit and pay online, well, there's not as many people using the post office. Well, yeah, but the post office is still ha the post office still delivers massive amounts of of mail. The problem is, is that like so many other government operations and so many private operations, they uh, have too much money heavily invested in um, pension plans and and health benefits, and it's basically driving the post office under. Uh, well, that'll do it So you. they want another rate increase, and Congress of the United States is not going to vote them another raise in, rate increase because they, they threaten, well, unless we get a rate increase, we're going to shut the Postal Service down on Saturdays. Well, that got them nowhere, but a lot of attacks from the people that are picking up the, the difference. I mean, okay, the post office is not a private business. It cannot lose money since it is not a private business, which means somebody picks up the losses every year. That would be. The United States government picks up their losses every year, which means the people of the United States makes up the, the losses. Actually, they're doing a strike just like other unions do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is a postal union. There is a postal union. The postal union refuses to... Uh, well, they said that what's going to happen is the postal service is going to be allowed to declare bankruptcy. When they declare themselves bankrupt, they will divest themselves from all the postal contracts that they have, and then they will be able to fix the problem. Isn't that an amazing situation? But right now, the federal government will not allow the Postal Service to declare bankruptcy. Why? Because the Democrats are in control and they need the union vote. Mm. So, but... Um, so you're you know, wondering, how in the world does this affect you? Well, guess what? It happens to be the holiday season, which means more people are using the post office. Yeah, you, uh, they said that they, they will not guarantee uh, next day delivery anymore on first class mail, which you're paying for next day delivery. Isn't that on why you buy first class mail anyway? Yeah, you buy it. You're paying a special service for next day delivery. That's no longer guaranteed. What about the you know like the overnight delivery? You pay the premium. for? Oh, that's a premium, premium. But the premium you pay for you know like the special the uh, the two dollars or something extra you pay to get your thing delivered, just not overnight. Yeah. That's no longer guaranteed. They no longer will guarantee that you're at, they, will, they said they cannot guarantee that if you send your mail out after the 10th that it will get there until after, <laughs> is after the first of the year. What? Yeah. The 10th, that's like, what, three weeks? Uh, this is why everybody with any brains is saying the postal service is playing. They are, they're doing what, uh, you know, what businesses and unions do all the time when they want something is they basically threaten to shut everything down. Uh, they also, I heard people said this morning if they thought the postal service was going to get away with this, they were crazy. You know, they're they're the people are you know pay the bills for the postal service. Those people don't tell the people what to do. They've already lost on shutting the postal service down. They used to, okay. Here's a trick. Most people don't realize this. That when I was younger actually clean up until the 1960s, the Postal Service had seven-day-a-week delivery and twice-a-day delivery to your home and businesses. 
then they phased out to twice a day and went to one a day. I mean, uh, and then six days. Now they want five days because uh, uh, because it, it will help save them money. Well, no, the post office is still the uh, the, the trucks are still rolling, folks. The trucks are still rolling. So the postal service is still working. You're just not getting your mail. Same people are being, okay, the way it works too. If they have X amount of employees, they can't lay off employees without government permission because they're civil service, which means civil service are going to be paid whether or not they're working. Are you serious? If they're not delivering mail, they're still going to get paid. You can't lay off a civil servant, you, you know. That, that's the whole trick. Uh, it, it cannot be done without an act of Congress. And this is that the sticking point is on the government cuts. I mean, the, the, um, you can't downsize our government without the government giving you permission to fire civil servants. So, and since the Democrats are in control of the Senate, you're never going to get permission to downsize the size of the government. But, uh, but they, they, they pissed off the Democrats and Republicans alike this morning when they made the announcement that uh, we're not teaching the American people a lesson. We just don't have the money to do the operations this year as we did in the past. So we're going to have to make extreme cutbacks. <clears throat> it just happened to happen right before the Christmas rush. Mm -hmm. so. I know. It's, you know, that always reminds me. It's like that's when you can count on a union to go on strike. Like when do the airlines go on strike? Right before a holiday. Right, when their contracts are due. Yeah. When do the supermarkets go on strike? Uh, right before a holiday. When do the actors unions go on strike? Right before the new season starts. Right. And here is the unique thing about it. I mean, my, okay, I've been in unions, lots of them. My father was before. My father helped found unions. The, um, my father will tell, my father, if you're the line, would flat out tell you there was never a union strike that benefited the union workers. Wasn't there just a union strike? Didn't somebody just go on strike like earlier this week, where they actually lost more than they would have? Oh yeah, uh, the, no, the British employee, British uh, civil service unions went on strike to to protest the fact that a retirement age is going to have to go up, which had to go up anyway because of the more people, and that they're going to have to start paying. Uh, they're going to have to actually start paying something into the health care plan, and um, so they decided to teach the people of England a valuable lesson. The, the, the workers in their, in their one day strike lost more money than they would have had to pay into the system. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know. Yeah, they taught them a lesson. They taught them. But this is unions. Unions are not the most bright. Okay. If, if, you, if you join a union and you can't add one and one and come up with two, you're probably a typical union worker today. Well, you know, I think maybe they need to just come up with some new strategies. Yeah. You've got to have some bright people over there. No, they, they don't. <coughs> Unions basically, okay, look at this. They're going, they, they shut down the state of Wisconsin for, uh, for weeks because of the unions. They're getting ready to, to have supposedly a knockdown, drag out battle to get rid of the governor of the state to put in a liberal Democrat who has a Republican control in Congress, which means the laws aren't going to change. They can bounce the governor, but you can't, they couldn't. They not only couldn't succeed in getting rid of the Republicans in the House and Senate, the Republicans gained a seat in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So it made things worse. And they did they get rid of the Supreme Court that divided again? They, the recall election? That didn't work. They even said, well, the, the Republicans rigged the election. Um, the Democrats control the voting precincts in the state. So they said that when it got all done and finished, they found out that the Democrats had rigged the election to, loot, to win. And so, and, and they still, in a rigged election, they couldn't win. Isn't that great? But um, uh, it's all about power. The uh, unions don't want to relinquish power. Our government doesn't want to relinquish power. You have, you know, no one's, I mean, uh, I don't see Occupy Wall Street in front of post offices. You know why? Why? Because it's got to do with union uh, pension plans and stuff. Uh, and this is an uh, Occupy Wall Street is a democratically sponsored thing. So you think they're going to say, let's go protest in front of the of the of the business that is being crushed by unions? No. No. This go, but they will go protest in front of a mom and pop store who doesn't hire union workers. 
Ah, that's the clue. That's right. So look at where they're protesting. Look at where they're protesting. But uh, it just, you know, if the American, American people can put a, you know, a stop to this stuff with the government, you know, here's the trick is, if you don't throw everybody out, you don't solve the problem. If you throw everybody out, they clean up the mess that's in the government. They basically uh, change the hiring system. But don't you have a mess because nobody knows what they're doing? Oh, that's how you find a new, a new bolder solution. Yeah, but you, you have to replace the people. You cannot put professional politicians in the role to clean up. It, it's just like, okay, Republicans are planning to run the fox to clean up the hen house. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody that's running is a, polit is a professional politician. Mm -hmm. They cannot fix a problem they helped to cause. I mean, okay, look, no sooner did Scott Brown became a United States Senator, he decided with uh, was it Susan Collins and Olympia Snow to spend money. I know, which is totally against what he was supposed to be running for. Oh, and that also happened with other candidates, too. They all go back on their... Uh, they, they have, or is it they were just said that in naivety? No, they. Oh, as soon as they get in, they didn't realize the situation was as bad as they hoped was, and they can't. If they do this, it's going to hurt the economy. Well, well, uh, you know the challenge is they learn. They learn very quickly that they got to play by the rules that exist. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, they aren't getting anywhere. Mr. Smith goes to Washington is only in some idealist dream, but no. You, 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 here's what it is: change the rules. You basically. Uh, but it, it's like that glass ceiling. Yeah. The guard is there. And they don't like it if you buck them. Well, here's the trick: is Scott was elected to buck the system, and he joined the system. A lot of the Tea Party House members were elected to buck the system, and they joined the system. You don't like they said. Well, these people, the Tea Party people, that did what they were elected to do. They want to destroy our country. You know, they were elected to do what they did, and they're not getting flack from the people that elected them. And that's, you know, I'll put it this way: if you're a member of Congress from Taos, New Mexico, it, uh, you know, you're elected to represent the interests of Taos, New Mexico, not the interest of San Francisco, California. That is the problem. With Sometimes the they get kind of wrapped up in their party. Well, no, it's just all got to do with money because um, once they're there, the okay. Well, they learn very quickly that if they want the support, which includes all the money, um, they've got to play by the rules. But they're right. also starting to learn is that they're going to get their rear ends thrown out of office. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they actually didn't believe that they would run candidates against the Tea Party people that were elected. Well, they're running candidates against the people that voted to increase spending. I mean, the, okay, what happens if you shut the government down? Nothing. The world goes on if you shut the government down. It goes on like it did the day before. Uh, I said when Obama has yanked all of the troops out of uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, he no longer has any leverage there to say, well, if you shut the government down, it will stop the military operations. Well, he's also pairing, you know, uh, cutting the military budget drastically in half. We're basically throwing Israel under the wheels of the bus, well, because they're too, we, we can't afford to have them anymore. So, uh, if, so what happens if, okay, what happens if the post office shuts down? The United States government has to step in because those are the rules. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, the government, the military will then be forced to deliver the mail, and they have done that. During an ill, during, okay, the postal service is not permitted to strike. So with a, when they have struck illegal, the United States military has stepped in to deliver the mail. Oh yeah, so what effect will the post office shutting down have? None. You just have guys in the military office delivering the mail to your homes and businesses. Well, and, that would be nice. And here's, I heard, you know, another guy said, in other words, we're going to have better service because they won't go spend half the day sitting in a coffee shop drinking. Are eating. Oh really? Oh yeah. Now, I didn't know the postal people did that. Oh yeah, I found out. Okay, we, you know, we were living, you know, on a rural route. We were not getting mail for weeks. So we couldn't figure out what was going on. We said we, you know, we weren't getting bills. We were mm -hmm. contacting people. We're not. Get, well, we sent the stuff out, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, after about three weeks, we had a bag delivered to our front door with the mail in it. 
and then the, the house next door had a bag of mail, and then we, we all, everybody started grump, you know, they'd come over, did you just get a bag from the post office of mail? They said, yeah, so we threw a fit about it, and then you know, we were told by the United States Postal Service, the postal, the, the carrier does not have to deliver the mail on a daily basis. His job is to make certain that the mail is eventually delivered. Eventually, meaning that they can basically not deliver that. What, what happened was they went to the guy, you know, they did check. They, uh, they went to his, uh, a story stalker. He had all the mail he was supposed to be delivering and putting it in bags. And uh, what he was doing, he was, he was working another job at the same time he was supposed to be delivering the mail. Oh, is that what happened? But it was a government job, so since he, and then we, t we wanted to have, they said you cannot fire a postal service worker. It takes several years of effort to fire a postal service worker. Yeah. So therefore, you know, and, and he has to be paid during the entire time he's not working. Because he's a civil servant. The, the rules for firing, once you become a civil servant, the rules for firing civil servants are ungodly. So, and then, you know, will the post office, like they said this morning, is, the, is this threat of the post office against the American people going to work? No. They said the one thing American people really hate to be Democrats or Republicans both is threat. So you want to unite both political parties in a common cause? You think the President of the United States is going to allow the post office to shut down the system? He's a, he basically is a Muslim. He doesn't believe in Christmas. But you think he will allow that to happen politically in this next couple? After the 1st of January, they can do whatever the hell they want, but not before Christmas. So, I know. I'm, I know, but you know, it's just... I guess here's the lesson in the lesson learned may not be on the people, maybe it is. The lesson will probably be mostly on the postal workers. They'll learn. Yeah, what will happen is, my guess is that within the next two weeks before Congress goes, actually the next week before Congress goes on recess for the 14th, they'll vote to allow the Postal Service to declare bankruptcy. And Do it you really will, think they would? They have to because they, uh, you can't let the post office do what they're doing. Even though it will damage them with the... Okay, here's the trick is. Who is it that will not be getting paychecks in the mail because the postal service is delayed? Oh. Union workers. Who is it that Christmas cards are not going to get to where they want them to go because of a slowdown? Union workers. Who is it that is not going to get pension checks in the mail that don't do electronic transfer because the postal shutdown? Union workers. Who is it that is not going to get... Uh, the delivery of the Christmas presents to their family members before Christmas, union workers. So when you piss off other unions, you had better have a god-awful powerful union, and the Postal Service Union is not that big and powerful. Because everybody hates them. Is there a post office worker that anybody... Okay, Postal Service workers and people that you call, you know, uh, on the phone about problems with bills... Customer service. Our customer service are the most hated people. I mean, they're they're down beneath car salesmen and politicians. Well, because they don't do the, they don't work. They don't have to work. Except I like the people on my phone. Well, I know you're probably weird. one of the friendliest people. Yeah, but you also can't get. I, I mailed a thing. Um, basically, because of that post office she loves, I had to um, a car. I had to pay a traffic fine five times. Oh well. Yeah. And where I usually just buy stamps. But we put it this way, the delivery only had to go like three blocks down the street. And they didn't get it delivered until, uh, well, they eventually got it delivered. They returned it to me four months later after I paid the thing four times. See, I learned after paying it the fourth time not to use that post office anymore. So, I, <laughs> Well, as you can tell, it's like I go there periodically to buy stamps. But yeah. I know. Here's the bad part is I don't even know how much a stamp costs right now, which means I'm hardly mailing anything. I think they're getting ready to make push it to 50 cents is what they want, really? which, you know, there's no other postal service in the world that is not delivering the mail, only the United States Postal Service, you know, why? Guess what our postal service is versus the other postal services? It's handled by union personnel. They get union benefits, you know, but they're not union. They're, they're not government union, so I guess 
Well, you're going to be hearing more about this. We'll see whether or not they cave or not. But until next time, this is Old Camel. This is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I know. For more information, go to <laughs> yeah, www.monkeybubble.net on the net. She basically, well, she's, she's, she planned to go out in the cold in a miniskirt today, folks. So. I know, but it's... Where people are wearing, uh, they're wearing winter it's jackets. She always, well, her house is always warm because Monty lives there. The sun always shines on Monty's house if she wants to go out. Okay. So anyway, wherever you're watching, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet, the polls, and Twitter, as well as like us on Facebook.